For computing Taylor series, there's a lot that we can do with algebra. Why is that? Well, a Taylor series is like a polynomial, and working with polynomials is not so bad, right? Well, let's see. Here's an example. Taylor expand the function f of x equals cosine squared of x. What are we going to do? Well, the cosine series is kind of like a long polynomial. We know that cosine of x is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, etc., etc., etc. Now, let's work with this just like polynomial multiplication. So that cosine squared of x is what? It's the cosine series times the cosine series. Now, what do we do with this? Well, we just multiply all these terms out. It's kind of like uh, FOIL, right? First outside, inside last, but a little more complicated. Now, if we do the first, 1 times 1, that's 1. That's okay. But the next highest term in terms of degree is going to be quadratic. And I have a 1 times minus x squared over 2 factorial, and then a minus x squared over 2 factorial times 1. That gives me minus 2 times x squared over 2 factorial. And now i got to keep going. This is maybe not so nice to do after all. Now, we can try distributing, try collecting terms, seeing what happens. So let's rearrange things. We have the cosine series times itself. I'm going to distribute that out by saying that this equals 1 times the cosine series minus x squared over 2 factorial times the cosine series plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial times the series. Keep going, keep going. I've sort of run out of space to write this all down horizontally. So let's rearrange the terms. Let's stack them vertically. So I have 1 times the cosine series. Write that out. Now, let's distribute out minus x squared over 2 factorial times the cosine series. What do I get? Minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 2 factorial times 2 factorial minus x to the 6th over 2 factorial times 4 factorial, plus x to the 8th over 2 factorial times 6 factorial. Keep going, keep going. I have to do the same thing with x to the 4th over 4 factorial times all the terms in the cosine series, then minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial times all the terms in the cosine series. It really helps if you arrange these vertically so that the powers match up. Why? Because what I'm going to do in the end is group everything together term by term, respecting degrees. So in the end, what do I get? The degree zero term is equal to one. The quadratic term, the degree two term, is minus x squared over two factorial, minus x squared over two factorial. Add them together, I just get minus x squared. The next term, the degree 4 term, is going to be something times x to the fourth. That something is 1 over 4 factorial, 1 24th, plus 1 over 2 factorial times 2 factorial, that's 1 fourth, and then again 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 24th. Okay, all of that added together times x to the fourth. Now the degree 6 term is, uh, let's see, I got a couple of things here. I got a minus sign, and then I've got 2 times 1 over 6 factorial. That's 2 over 720. And then 2 times 1 over 2 factorial times 4 factorial. That's 2 divided by, I don't know, this is getting kind of complicated, and we still have a lot of other terms to do. Ooh, now this would work, but let's think. It's always worth asking yourself, am I missing something? Ah, yes, that's it. I remember now, remember the double angle formula. That's the one that says cosine squared of x is one half times quantity one plus cosine two x. Oh, that's a useful formula. In this case, this is going to allow us to say, what, cosine squared x, that's 1 half times quantity 1 plus cosine 2x. I'm going to distribute that 1 half out. So I get 1 half plus 1 half times 
what I get when I substitute 2x into cosine. What is that? That's going to be 1 minus quantity 2x squared divided by 2 factorial plus quantity 2x to the 4th divided by 4 factorial minus quantity 2x to the 6th over 6 factorial. Keep going. Now, all I have to do is a little bit of algebraic simplification. The first term is 1 half plus 1 half. That's 1. The next term is a quadratic term, and that's going to be 1 half times negative 4x squared divided by 2. That yields negative x squared. What about the fourth order term? Well, I've got a, let's see, 2 to the 4th, that's 16x to the 4th divided by 2 times 4 factorial. That simplifies to be 1 third x to the 4th. Oh, that's really nice. I'll leave it to you to check that the next term is negative 2 over 45 times x to the 6th. This is so much nicer than the way we did it multiplying everything out. Always think before resorting to doing a lot of algebra.